I live in a Victorian house. It's late Victorian, mid-terrace. Uh, rather curiously, we're on a hill, so it appears like it's two stories on the front, but it's four stories on the rear. And uh, the rear, rear of the house is therefore quite exposed uh, based on the footprint of the house. And uh, three of the main rooms that are currently being lived in have got two exterior walls, which uh, when you've got the wind blowing and uh, the rain coming at you is uh, quite significant. We were starting a family. We wanted to have the house warm. We knew that it was going to be used more than the previous occupants had been living in it. So we looked at the various options that we had and uh, we also considered what the order that we were going to be doing it in. I was very keen to have some sort of renewable energy here if it was appropriate and we realised that with the scaffolding going up and doing the exterior work a couple of years ago that that was a great opportunity to fix some sort of solar system up onto the roof and I looked at solar PV and I looked at solar thermal and the solar thermal was a, a cheaper option and we were, we were happy that we could get, get a return back on that over 20 or so years. One, one of the potentially really disruptive aspects of installing the solar thermal would have been where the feed pipes went going from the panels down to the hot water tank. And we'd originally thought we we're going to have to take this piping internally, but then uh, we just thought a bit outside the box and decided why don't we just put the piping right on the outside of the house. And we've got this insulated pipe that the, the fluid and, and its piping can go from the panels right up on the roof there, right down here into the basement. One of the concerns with the solar system that we looked into was the fact that our combi boiler might not have been compatible with a, a new solar thermal system. And we've, we had a supplier who could provide a, and install a, an adapter. So what we've got is a three-way valve that was fitted onto this that uh, is controlled by the electric sensor up there and this connected to the boiler and then to the solar system and its hot water tank just behind the wall there. So we realised that we wanted to do quite a lot of work in our bedroom. The, it needed redecorating. The, the windows were letting out a lot of heat very drafty and the cornicing all around the, the top edge of the room was was very very cracked and there were also cracks in the ceiling so we had a look at what we could do we you know do we replace the cornicing putting in a new ceiling um, how do we make the room warmer and we decided to put in some new double glazed windows into the room that was one thing that we knew would reduce the heat loss uh, I went for internal wall insulation in our bedroom because it was a contained space. The, uh, there's an obvious option to clad the outside of the house, but that would have required cladding the whole two faces of the uh, exterior of the house on the rear. And uh, these are the two walls here and here that we've insulated with this wood fibre board and I've calculated that we've lost 3% of the floor space. There was a concern that it would be more than that, and yet it is, in my wife's words, it's imperceptible. And this are fixed up onto the wall using these fittings here. I need a pretty heavy, heavy duty drill to drill through the fibre board, which I positioned uh, layer by layer um, against the wall there, drilled through the board into the wall and then with these fittings just put that plug in there and then the pin just hammered that pin through and then that was all fitted up onto the wall there and then I got some guys in to, to put a lime render onto that and uh, then we painted it with this breathable paint. The obvious challenges for us is what will what were we going to do with the Victorian features of the home? These windows have been refurbished. The, uh, the stop beads, the original stop beads were taken out and there are now these replaceable ones on the edge here. And uh, they've taken the actual window frames out and been able to route and then insert brushes on uh, both the, uh, all the way around the, the window 
and then put in these special stop beads here that have got brushes too. In the room here, in the sitting room here, there were lots of gaps in the floorboards, varying thicknesses. And uh, one of the things I found really great was this um, very stretchy rubber material that you can just squeeze in and then force down. And uh, of course, because of its very stretchy nature, it can adapt to the different thicknesses. You get a nice little roller to push it down with as well. That's worked really well. Where I haven't been able to do that, I've just used a, a silicon filler to go into the, into the gaps. In some other areas, I've done it with some wood strips, but certainly, you know, when you're sitting down watching telly or something, you don't really want to have drafts coming up against your feet, and that's made a good difference. Also got these very thick insulated curtains as well, which um, not only look nice, but uh, they are lined with uh, basically a blanket, it looks like. And um, again, that's just stopped the heat from going out of the room here and uh, makes the room nice and cozy. I've also done some underfloor insulation in two of the rooms as well. So this is my son's bedroom. This is a north facing room and our sitting room is beneath. And um, we have insulated between the two rooms by filling it with this, this is, recycled newsprint. That's not something I did myself, but uh, a company came in and did that. And uh, it's also, again, insulating the sound as well. So any noise that we're making downstairs, he's not really hearing as much as he would have done before. Okay, so we're in the cellar now. And uh, where um, I've been able to, I've also used the same underfloor insulation system that I used under the floor of the, the sitting room. So here's the sheep's wool. Uh, suspended with this net and I really wanted to use sheep's wool for this. I was uh, not only in, in this part of the house but when I was under the floor on my back and uh, handling this material all the time I wanted to use something that was uh, as natural as possible. Well overall I'm very aware that the, the amount of work that we've done has made the house more comfortable to be in. I think there are definitely less drafts there are rooms that were cool or cold at night or in the winter before that are now feel just absolutely right. Another one of the benefits of uh, refurbishing the windows is that we've got less sound coming in from outside, so with traffic for example. I'm very comfortable with having spent that amount of money in, in respect of knowing how much better the house feels to be living in. Um, I've seen our bills going down. I feel the house is warmer. I feel less drafts. And I feel that what we've got here is a home that is going to keep us warm and we can heat and light and power at a very reasonable rate over the coming years.